champions and good morning to my respected seniors and chairpersons also sir vasant kumar sir so i was asked to talk about changing face of pediatric diabetes by dr bansi and i thought i could have probably talked about either epidemiology i could have talked about diagnostic criteria and things like that and finally i decided i'll talk a bit about each but more importantly present cases so that people can actually see in clinical practice that not everything is type 1 diabetes and not everything which is type 1 diabetes is typical so i'll very i'll have to be very quick because i have a lot of slides to go through so diabetes in young or pediatric diabetes everybody has a different definition internationally accepted definition is 25 years you know we might go on arguing about this but if diabetes is diagnosed at before the age of 25 it is considered as diabetes in young and given the fact that if you look at india for example 40% of indians are below the age of 25 so even if you have a small proportion of people having diabetes because the denominator is so big we are dealing with a very big problem and probably with the rising epidemiology and of and prevalence of obesity we are probably heading towards trouble so if you look at types of diabetes technically speaking when we were students we were taught young diabetes means almost universally type 1 there are few other causes now we realize that apart from type 1 you have type 2 and just like our previous book at talk about monogenic diabetes there are several other types of diabetes which i will illustrate through cases as we go along so this is dr mohan's data and if you see at his own center the number of people coming in with diabetes who are young has progressively increased in the last say 20 30 years telling us diabetes in young is a problem and what has also happened is you can see the proportion of type 1 versus type 2 has also undergone a dramatic change with now type 2 being more common than type 1 in those below the age of 25 even those below the age of 20 years of age particularly below 16 things might be a bit different above 16 seriously type 2 is much more common and if you look at worldwide the prevalence and if you look at the trajectories according to age you will suddenly find after 15 16 there's a sudden rise particularly in southeast asians that's predominantly because of increasing type 2 diabetes with regards to type 1 diabetes we are already world's number one in terms of the number of children with type 1 diabetes the idf atlas is due to be again published the new edition is coming out in the month of december that too i understand type 1 prevalence in india has gone up dramatically one in five child with type 1 diabetes in the world is an indian so that's pretty alarming even though we don't care about it that much so let's look at a few cases pooja is a 11 year old girl who's come on summer vacation to her grandparents in kolkata her grandmother has noticed that she's getting thinner in spite of eating well has been thirsty and is thought to be playing due to playing out in the sun for several hours one afternoon she's fainted her friends bring her along and then she's rushed to the hospital in the hospital blood glucose is very high ketones strongly positive bicarbonate slow admitted in the icu and treatment started for ketoacidosis her parents have diabetes but when the c peptide was measured and which was repeated even after good glycemic control it came back as very low the gad was negative the ia2 was negative should she undergo additional tests to establish the diagnosis because the father who lives in bangalore has come and said my parents have type 2 diabetes therefore my daughter if she at all has diabetes it is type 2 diabetes i've read on internet the antibodies are negative so what we've got to understand is that this is antibody negative type 1 diabetes now this can be a true type 1b diabetes or there might be certain caveats of about the antibodies itself so if you look at the antibodies you can see depending on how many antibodies you are testing and how much after the diagnosis of type 1 diabetes you are testing the antibody numbers might go on declining and just doing two antibodies might not necessarily give you positivity this is dr ish bhatia's group's paper from sgpj lucknow which suggests that both negative can be in about 45% of the cases we actually did a similar study in our population in the eastern part of kolkata we found that if you if you are testing for all antibodies the ones that we've looked at here then the total antibody negativity is very low somewhere around 2% but if you are checking randomly antibodies they can be negative and even with all negative antibodies it can be type 1 diabetes the second case is a 19 year old girl who's been consulting a gynecologist for irregular menstruation 
she as part of the workup she was asked to do a fasting insulin level which was high she was told that you know you have insulin resistance and was started on metformin she then consulted a dermatologist for her sutism my lactathosis was noticed bmi is high her mother and grandparents have type 2 diabetes a family friend suggested that she consult a diabetologist or an endocrinologist the metformin was stopped and ogtt was done type 2 diabetes was diagnosed hba1c lipid profile renal function ast alt all were deranged so essentially here we have a diagnosis of type 2 diabetes so remember one of the hardest indicators of type 2 diabetes in children is absence of insulinopenia features of insulin resistance features of fatty liver features of dyslipidemia so go by that so here there are several issues which i'm not going to talk about because of paucity of time but remember if the age is particularly above 21 if the bmi is high if you have features of insulin resistance you have preserved c peptide raised triglyceride and low hdl and raised ast alt type 2 diabetes is more common so this is my cohort of children with diabetes of course there are biases because uh, i have a special fcpd cohort and because i have a cohort of children with thalassemia with secondary diabetes that's why you will see a big chunk is related <laughs> diabetes and a secondary diabetes due to thalassemia but if you look at the rest of the data from our uh, cohort of kolkata diabetes group you will find that the points that i've actually made in terms of the weight in terms of the a1c's and in terms of the lipid categories these are very very important in differentiation the icmr young diabetes registry also does talk about that type 2 diabetes in indian children might be as high as 25% of total diabetes but if you're trying to predict type 1 versus type 2 in children if the age is below 16 if the c peptide is low both stimulated as base, as well as basal if the triglycerides are low and if the hdl is normal then it is probably type 1 diabetes and this is andrew hatterley's group which actually tried to figure out what the discriminatory features of type 1 versus type 2 in their cohort is and they also looked at insulinopenia as probably the most important criteria to differentiate the two the next is a 25 year old gentleman who resides in nodia who got a job in the gulf country 6 months ago all routine tests as part of the pre employment checkup was normal he was otherwise overweight no other findings were there he was asymptomatic he joined work and then after 4 5 months he had a significant weight loss general sense of tiredness and weakness his family members asked him to come back he must have been homesick that's what they thought weight loss was appreciated acanthosis nigricans very clearly seen as you can see in this individual with significant weight loss his blood glucose were very high he was acidotic ketones strongly positive diagnosed as dka treatment started but he required very high doses of insulin per day so here we have an individual who has features of insulin resistance but a significant ketosis remember this can happen even in type 2 diabetes but what we found was that the c peptide was very low at diagnosis and even after good glycemic control the antibodies were strongly positive so here we have a situation of double diabetes where the type 1 diabetes has happened on a background of insulin resistance these individuals seem to do badly in terms of outcome and need much more aggressive therapy the next is a 19 year old girl who presented with malaise and furin frequent urination has gradually put on weight over the last few years parents and grandparents have a history of diabetes urine examination shows glycosuria fasting sugars high postprandials high a1c is high she had a c peptide done which was lowish normal after discussion her parents she was started on insulin and followed up after 4 months she was doing well but still remained on insulin so what could be the diagnosis so initially lowish c peptide could be due to glucotoxicity it could be because of type 2 diabetes per se it could be with type 1 which is preserved some amount of insulin secretion it could be lady actually in a young individual it could be double diabetes or it could be modi so we repeated the c peptide it still came as low normal antibodies were positive so it could be lady in this particular circumstance so the, if you look at uh, latent autoimmune diabetes biological false positive of gad antibody is still there but still remember the diagnosis finally is made retrospectively after the individual becomes dependent on insulin very quickly the next is a 24 year old gentleman 
detected with diabetes, very high postprandial glucose, no history of hospitalization, family history negative, body weight very low, BMI very low, uncontrolled with OADs and no history of ketosis. And the X-ray shows extensive intraductal pancreatic calcification, classical of FCPD. So not all young thin type are type 1s. It could well be FCPD. Screen all young individuals for FCPD. Screen family members as well. Remember, ketosis, though rare, might happen in patients with FCPD. They usually tend to have no basal insulin requirement and recurrent hypoglycemias, and they are at great risk of malignancies. I'll skip some of these slides and move on. So the next is a 15-year-old girl who's gone to Digha, a seaside resort near Kolkata as part of a school excursion. She started vomiting, was rushed to the hospital, had been sick with an upper respiratory illness for four days prior to this episode. Her initial blood glucose was 500 plus. There was no ketones. She was treated with IV fluids and insulin and sent back to Kolkata. She was reassessed at a corporate diabetes center and further evaluated with antibodies and C-peptide and told that she's type 2 diabetes and was started on metformin. Her father, grandfather, and grandparents all have type 2 diabetes and maternal aunt has type 1 diabetes. She doesn't tolerate metformin well and was asked to start insulin. That's when she came to us for another opinion. The weight was at the 75th centile. She had no markers of insulin resistance. Lipids were normal. LFT was normal. So this is probably where you think of Modi. So you think of early onset diabetes, non-insulin dependent, C-peptide preserved, autosomal dominant. So diagnosis of diabetes before 25 years in at least one or ideally two family members. Of insulin, measurable C-peptide should be there at least three years or at least or ideally five years after diagnosis. And there has to be mutation, must be diabetes in one parent, two generation and ideally three parents three generations. So just in continuation with what the previous speaker quite rightly pointed out, that you can't do a Modi testing in everyone. Diagnosis of type 2 diabetes with detectable C-peptide with one or more of the following should actually make you think about Modi, where the individual is normal weight or mildly overweight, there's no signs of insulin resistance, and where there is no feature of metabolic dysfunction. So I'm not going to bore you with this slide again, because it's probably a speciality approach. So in our clinical practice, what should we be doing when we are seeing a child with diabetes or a young individual with diabetes? Of course, we've got to take a very good history because the family history might tell us about type 2 diabetes and the family history might tell us about Modi. The family history also might tell, a, tell us about FCPD because there's a lot of familiar clustering. The rapidity of onset tells us how quickly insulinopenia has probably happened. Ketosis, Though more common in type 1 may happen in other forms of diabetes as well, including type 2. Think of how long the patient has been able to survive without being on insulin because the patient might have been on tablets for a long period of time. That will give you a clue with regards to the type of diabetes. And look at the response once you've started an oral hypoglycemic agent. Is the blood glucose coming down? On clinical examination, look for body weight look for BMI, look for waist circumference, features of malnutrition, particularly for FCPD and pancreatic diabetes, look for features of insulin resistance for type 2 diabetes, history of polycystic ovarian disease, hyperandrogenism, all of that is very important. In the investigation, in an acute setting, look for ketosis or acidosis. Lipids, like I said, increased TG with low HDL is a feature of metabolic syndrome and type 2 diabetes. Fatty liver, more common in type 2 diabetes, just as hyperuricemia. X-ray abdomen will tell you a lot of things, particularly FCPD. Ultrasound, not only will detect fatty liver, but also few forms of MODI. <coughs> C-peptide, now as per the new guideline, any post-meal C-peptide after within five hours of meal is good enough. Antibody testing, <coughs> select individuals. And Modi testing, of course, if available in select individuals. This is a pretty busy slide, but is essentially a summary of all that I have stated. I'm sorry I was rushing through so that I could at least cover some of the most important causes in children with diabetes. Thank you very much. I shall stop there.